This is KUTV Primetime News with Irene Mwangi. Thank you for staying tuned. It is that time for our discussion tonight. As we promised, we'll be looking into the unlocked entertainment industry here in the country. Joining us live is DNG, who is the leader and the founder of the Who Is Your Leader initiative. Many thanks indeed, DNG, for joining us tonight. It's an absolute pleasure, Ina Sandy Sana, for having me. All right. Now, uh, during the Labor Day celebrations, we saw President Uru Kenyatta um, ease some of the measures that are put in place to combat COVID-19, especially in the five disease-infested zone. But there remained a, there, there remains a special group, that is the entertainment industry, who since March 2020 have not been able to resume to their normal operations due to the COVID-19 measures. Listening to what President Uru Kenyatta had to say during the Labor Day celebrations, do you think he has put into concern some of the sectors, especially the entertainment industry? I think first and foremost, uh, we'd like to just say that we've taken um, the presidential directive pretty well. Uh, we are cognizant that he's allowed us to operate bars and restaurants up to about 7 p.m. So what that means for establishments that have been closed is that they can uh, now reopen. What that means for businesses that had collapsed is that they can now start to find their way and find their footing back to business operation. Mm -hmm. So now, if you look at our initial request, plea and declaration mm -hmm. uh, and petition to the president, we were asking for full and unconditional opening mm -hmm. of uh, the nation. So that has not been done per se. What we have seen is uh, um, some easement of some sort mm -hmm. uh, and what that has done at least it has allowed some players to continue operating mm -hmm. so what it means for the entire industry at large is that uh, we have to wait and see it's a wait and see game as we continue to push for full and unconditional opening obviously uh, the fact that uh, bars have to be closed and restaurants have to be closed by 7 p.m it, it it pretty much alienates the nightlife and the nightlife has been a key income honor an income generator for a lot of people now, I'm talking about bouncers, waiters, baristas. Um, I'm talking about uh, mixologists. I'm talking about chefs, uh, business owners, investors in that industry, DJs, MCs, dancers, name it. Mm -hmm. They pretty much have been living off the nightlife industry, what we call entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we know that Kenya is a working nation. People work eight to five. So if you work eight to five, at what time do you have to go to the bar and leave by seven? So you have like two hours to entertain patrons. Yeah. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we are grateful for the little easement, but we're saying that uh, we now need to work jointly with government, with the uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, of course, uh, you would also like to say that we've been following uh, the WHO protocols mm -hmm. and the CDC protocols. That is... Uh, social distancing, no mask, no entry policy, um, hand washing, sanitizing in all events. Mm -hmm. And that is how we've, uh, we've been uh, trying to keep our patrons safe. And uh, we, we will be continuing to sensitize uh, patrons and revelers on the importance of uh, maintaining these guidelines. Mm -hmm. So we are, of course, continuing to push for full and unconditional opening. Mm -hmm. And we'd also like to state that the economy can only resume normalcy if we push towards a 24-hour economy. It's the only way we'll be able to pick up and rebuild mm -hmm. from the, uh, the, 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 the challenges that we've experienced during this pandemic and this lockdown. All right, DNG, um, what has been the situation like since March 2020 uh, to now we're talking about May, that is one year and two months or so. For this particular um, group, those people who are engaged in gigs and some who are termed as the night circle group, how have they been able to, to adjust to this new normal? We have seen some even get into depression, others calling for help. Um, what has been the real scenario on how the people in the entertainment industry have adjusted to the new normal? It's been an absolute difficult situation for most of the members of the entertainment industry. Now, without uh, entertainment venues open, we have no platforms or no venues to entertain patrons, revelers, and uh, you know, you know, fans of entertainment and music. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that the people who've been dependent on the entertainment industry for uh, sources of income 
have been unable to earn. That means that uh, if you are unable to earn, that means you cannot be able to uh, fulfill your obligations. And we all know that young people have been dependent on this industry because there are no jobs. So entertainment industry literally has come to be a savior for many young people. All right, we have young people who are educated, uh, who've gone to uh, university, who have master's degrees, but have not been able to get jobs. Mm -hmm. But entertainment has been a source of livelihood and income mm -hmm. for many, many years. Mm -hmm. These are young people who've decided to earn an, a legitimate source of income, who've uh, decried crime and, and involvement in all forms of shadow business and all forms of uh, dirty dealings like wash, wash and gold, you know, quote unquote gold dealings and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we've been seeing is a, a, a quick jump in crime. We've seen that. We've seen depression rates sky, uh, skyrocketing. We've seen suicide rates. We've seen anger and violence and all sorts of, 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 of challenges that young people are facing during this depression, mm -hmm. uh, economic depression for that matter. So right. it's been a difficult situation. All right. Now, each and every sector here in the country is adjusting to the new normal, um, which sometimes has to do things virtually via Zoom. And we've seen some of the artists embrace online gigs, but the question has been here in the country, are we seeing value for money in these uh, virtual concert, uh, concerts? Are um, artists embracing um, online gigs as perceived to uh, physical um, gigs? Have you seen a tendency of um, them embracing the new normal of virtual concerts? I think we've all embraced virtual to some extent. In fact, uh, during the first lockdown, there about of uh, March 2020 is when we saw a quick surge in the online activity regarding events. Mm -hmm. So we'd see DJs, MCs, artists entertaining their fans online. So that happened and then it, it dipped. Today, we do not see much of those events. Pretty much they're unsustainable. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to put together such kind of events. Um, the income generated from such events is, is at, at an all-time low. Mm -hmm. We're also cognizant that the target audience of, uh, of those kind of events, being young people, are also struggling to get uh, access to Wi-Fi, access to bundles. That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. If you look at an opportunity cost at a time like this, uh, where you decide between bundles and a meal, or bundles and uh, paying a bill, be it a medical bill, be it a rent or a utility bill. Yeah. Will you surely choose to be entertained over food? It's, it's a difficult situation. We've tried it. It doesn't work. It's not sustainable. And that is why we've been pushing for unlocking of our country. All right. Now, the leaders here in the country, that includes the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Arts and also the legislative house, have they let down people in this particular industry in terms of pushing for funds to cushion the people in the entertainment industry who used to either work at night, but now we have curfews. Uh, at a time when we had the closure of bars, um, they were experiencing losses. Have we seen leaders come up to uh, cushion this particular group? Uh, are we seeing the government streamlining um, what is happening in the sector? Well, surprisingly, uh not known to many is that many of our artists have not received a single coin from this cushion funds. Now, allow me to just take you down a history lane. We saw uh, the, the president uh, do a press conference and announce that he has uh, commissioned 100 million Kenya shillings to be disbursed to artists. Uh, that was channeled supposedly uh, through the Ministry of Sports and Culture, headed by Ambassador Amina Mohammed. Yeah. And uh, this was constituted through the, the different agencies within our ministry. That is the Kenya Film Commission, the Kenya Cultural Center, mm -hmm. National Museums of Kenya, the Permanent Presidential Music Commission, and the Department of Culture. Uh, today, we've only seen accountability uh, regarding those funds from the Kenya Film Commission, who did a pretty good job in terms of stating how much money they disbursed and who they disbursed the money to. Obviously, we know there's a huge gap out of that chunk of money. Uh, the rest of uh, the agencies have remained mute. There is no public information available to date. And you can go Google after this uh, video interview. Uh, we have no idea where the money went, who took the money, 
and how much was given to who, mm -hmm. what criteria was used to disperse these funds, mm -hmm. what channel was used, whether there was public participation involved, whether there was a public procurement uh, policy and procedure followed, we have no idea. So what we're demanding at this moment, even before other funds are disbursed through that same line ministry, mm -hmm. we want to see public accountability mm -hmm. of these funds. We want each of the agencies that I've mentioned to articulate and be able to account for each and every coin. I would also like to call upon the President, His Excellency Urumuigai Kinyata, to take charge of this uh, accountability exercise because we cannot be having monies disbursed in the name of artists and in the name of uh, uh, cushion funds that disappear into thin air. We are also cognizant that monies are being borrowed left, right and centre in the name of COVID-19. So surely, if we cannot account for 100 million, how can we account for 1 billion, 2 billion, 5 billion, 10, 20 billion? Mm -hmm. All right, DNG, um, you would admit that um, the cost of this particular situation is that people in the entertainment industry um, lack professional bodies or union to advocate uh, for some of this money or to advocate for some of their, of their rights, especially in their businesses. Can you admit that indeed, as an industry, you failed to create um, union and bodies uh, which are recognized as the legal bodies to fight for some of these rights? Actually, uh, as, a, as a point of correction, there are so many uh, organizations and forms of associations within this industry. There's associations for DJs, musicians, MCs. Uh, you will find that we also have collective management organizations, the likes of CAMP, uh, PRISC, MCSK, etc. So they do exist. Whether they are doing their job, I think they are better placed uh, to tell us. Uh, what it is that they're doing. So I don't think it's a matter of unity because, uh, for example, if we talk about accountability for funds, whether we're united or separated, uh, whether somebody uh, is, is a, a member of an association in, in Mandera and the other one is a member of an association in Narok, mm -hmm. the other one in Kuala, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're a member of this uh, uh, organizations or as long as you're an artist that is recognized by whatever channels, whatever associations or unions you may call, you should be able to get a chunk of that money. Now, in fact, I would like to say that the CMOs that have been at the forefront of negative press for the longest time, mm -hmm. the CAP priests, MCS case, at least they remit and disperse funds. Okay. Whether it's little, whether it's 700 shillings and 30 bobby akutoa or 3k, at least they have been able to disperse. Mm -hmm. And then we have a ministry with a CS that has disbursed tombs that we've never seen. It's absolutely shocking. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would like to throw that, that unity card out of uh, the window. Nevertheless, that is why we've come together as one people, one voice, mm -hmm. and a banner of a movement that has uh, brought together players from different sectors, from entertainment, events, creative, uh, sports, hospitality, and, and many more uh, sectors that have been uh, adversely affected by the lockdown and the curfew measures still in place. Mm -hmm. And that is why we come, we've come together as one voice to articulate ourselves, articulate our needs, because nobody else is doing so. Yeah. People are quiet. Uh, people do not even know where to start. People do not even believe that their voices can be heard. But I think we've proven to the nation the power of strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is we've, we've created an organic movement with, with members of the public yeah. who are fans of entertainment, fans of nightlife, fans of travel, fans of uh, building Kenya and buying Kenya. And we've said, you know what, we're, we, we're tired of being locked down. We're not earning any money. We're unable to feed ourselves. We're unable to feed our families. We're unable to pay our bills. And we need to go back to work. All right. Now, um, we have seen that the churches have been opened through um, the Interfaith Council that has created some of these uh, measures put in place to, to ensure that people go back to church. And the church is also some sort of a public gathering. And therefore, the question has been whether in the period of one year, you have been able to create measures to salvage the situation. Have you perhaps come, come up with a council, not only the one people, one voice forum, are you perhaps having an ad hoc committee to sort of create measures uh, to ensure that we are seeing um, a, a, a recurrence of this particular um, entertainment industry here in the country during this time of COVID-19? Are you uh, planning to have a council um, to look into the measures that can see um, the entertainment industry unlocked? So 
currently we're having talks with the, the, the players. We do have a committee uh, to which I'm a vice chair. Uh, and we've been having conversations across multiple sectors. As I said, you know, we've been talking to players within creative, uh, bars, hotels, uh, tourism. Uh, and, 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 you know, for us, it's to have conversations about how we can go back to business. I think that is the, the critical element here, mm-hmm. how we can resume uh, normalcy. Mm-hmm. Because for us, without normalcy, there is no business. Mm-hmm. There, you know, if we cannot go back to, to, to a normal setting where we can have events, where we can have gatherings that, uh, you know, allow people to en- en- enjoy themselves within uh, the safe zone of mm-hmm. the COVID-19 protocols, mm-hmm. then we'll not be able to, to engage in business. So what we're saying is that we want to see businesses that had collapsed go back. We want to clinch back jobs. Because what happened, Irene, as soon as the president uh, gave his directives for the lockdown, people were immediately put on uh, on leave, mm-hmm. whether it is uh, indefinite leave or, or total termination. Those are jobs that were lost. Those are sources of income that were, were lost. That's That's taxes that the government def- desperately needs that were lost. So we need to figure out how to get those jobs back. It is not a guarantee that because the president after some period has decided, okay, let's uh, allow these guys to go back to work, that those jobs are still there. Perhaps the investors could have moved on. Yeah. Perhaps the clubs, the club owners or hotel owners or restaurant owners could have said, you know what, to hell with this industry. It's not beneficial. We've seen the Pride in MD saying he's reconsidering all his investments within the territory of the Republic of Kenya. Mm-hmm. Those are strong, strong messages yeah. to the government of the day mm-hmm. that uh, these are not industries to, 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 to just play around with. They're critical industries that are employing millions of, of, of Kenyan citizens and indirectly sustaining even more millions of dependents. You see, so so I feel like uh, going forward, uh, the government needs to rethink such uh, illogical, misguided, and unfortunate measures. Mm-hmm. If you look at other countries um, that have dealt with this pandemic successfully, I'll give you an example of New Zealand, mm-hmm. Australia, the United States. They've gone back to normal. Right. They've quickly vaccinated their people. They've uh, quickly uh, just put in place and enforced the the COVID-19 protocols, which we all know. Even the little children in kindergarten, one and two, they all know that they're not supposed to touch their faces with dirty hands without washing with soap and water. So I feel like instead of uh, lockdowns and curfews that are not adding any value in regards to dealing with this pandemic, we need to focus on what the WHO has told us, Mm -hmm. which is simply follow the protocols and go on with your life because uh, this is not something that's going to end in a split second. Mm -hmm. So we cannot close these industries indefinitely whenever Mm -hmm. we want and, and just quickly tamper with people's sources of livelihoods it's unfair it's draconian and it should not be allowed to continue all right you know the fight against COVID 19 here in the country is a joint effort and uh, the ministry of health is at the center of it now when you're looking into what the ministry of health is doing vis-a-vis other countries are we foreseeing a situation whereby we'll be able um, to overcome this particular virus, given that we might see a fourth wave, and again, we will be back to the measures uh, to combat the virus, which affects a lot of businesses here in the country? I think, first and foremost, the Ministry of Health is the biggest problem and the, 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 the biggest uh, roadblock to a successful management of the COVID-19 pandemic. By the time you're seeing all these scandals on television, Irene, you're seeing cancer and all the millions, billions stolen. What are we talking about regarding the Ministry of Health? Mm-hmm. We're talking about vaccines that, uh, you know, we do not know when the next batch of vaccine is going to take place. Mm-hmm. But... At the same time, we know that BBI is a, is a priority. We know that senators and uh, you know members of uh, parliament ideally have been recalled for special sittings. So you can see the priorities of this government. The priorities of this government, uh, government unfortunately, have not been the common one, Inchi, the you and I. The priorities are political succession. The priorities are BBI bill that uh, has no value mm-hmm. to any Kenyans. Mm-hmm. That is the most unfortunate thing about this regime. They do not care about Kenyans. They do not care, absolutely. If the Ministry of Health was serious about COVID-19 management, they would have tasked an agency such as NHIF to ensure that NHIF is covering COVID-19-related complications. For your information, NHIF is not 
taking care of COVID-19 related complications. So Kenyans are on their own. If you have no job, uh, then surely you cannot be able to pay that medical bill. So I have nothing great to say about the Ministry of Health. All right. All. All right. Thank you so much, DNG, for giving us a perspective concerning what is happening in the entertainment industry and what the government should do moving forward. Many thanks. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. That has been Davidson Gumbwini, who is commonly known as DNG, giving us a perspective on what is happening in the entertainment industry. Indeed, a lot of jobs have been lost due to the locking down of that particular industry. We do wish them all the best as they strive to revive that particular industry during this coronavirus pandemic. We are taking a break. We'll be back with more on what is happening beyond our borders. Stay tuned.